In my last video, I revealed three surprising reasons why it's healthier to eat dinner early and what you can do if you become hungry once you eat an early dinner. In this video, I'll reveal five steps you can take to sleep better and digest the food more effectively if you have to eat close to bedtime. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Park, an ear, nose, and throat surgeon and sleep medicine doctor. I'm also the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Sleep Interrupted. In today's 24-7 generation, many of you can't control when you get home, whether it's through the work or school. If you haven't watched my other video on the three surprising reasons why you shouldn't eat late after 7 p.m., click on the link below in the description. In this video, I'll provide nine tips on what you can do to maximize digestion and to promote optimal sleep. And here are the nine things to try. Not all will work for you, so you have to experiment or combine more than one. Number one, if you get home late and it's really close to your normal bedtime, think about fasting until breakfast. Many cultures and religions and recent dietary fads recommend intermittent fasting. It's worth trying. Number two, don't look at any screens and dim all your lights once you get home. Blue light lowers your body's secretion of melatonin, your sleep hormone. But melatonin has many other important functions such as lowering stomach acid production, lowering insulin production, and tightening the lower esophageal sphincter, which lessens the chances of having acid reflux. Number three, if it's getting close to your normal bedtime, don't eat and then delay your bedtime. Depriving yourself of sleep will lead to much worse focus, concentration, and energy levels the next day. Eat a very light snack or dinner. Number four, according to Ayurvedic and Chinese medicines, the digestive fire and Ayurveda and qi energy in Chinese medicine is at its lowest between 7 to 9 p.m. Their remedy is to have some ginger with salt before your meal to activate energy and increase blood flow to your stomach. Or you can have some ginger tea instead after dinner. Number five, do right nostril breathing called Surya Bedi Pranayama. Press your finger on your left nostril and take a slow deep breath in through your right nostril on the count of five. Hold for a few seconds and then switch nostrils and breathe out through the left nostril on the count of five. And repeat this seven to ten times. It's thought that breathing through the right nostril activates the sun element in your body, which stimulates the left side of your brain, which controls more of the sympathetic nervous system. So again, you're stimulating your stomach's energy, sun, or qi energy by breathing in through your right nostril to improve your digestion by improving blood flow and increasing stomach secretions and warming through vasodilatation. If you want a more thorough explanation, I'll place a link below. Number six, sleep on your left side since stomach juices are less likely to travel up into the esophagus. Number seven, use breathe right trips to improve your nasal breathing and to keep your mouth closed. Your nose makes a gas called nitric oxide and it has two important functions. Number one, it's antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral. Number two is that once it reaches the lungs, it improves oxygen uptake by 10 to 20%. Number eight, tape your mouth vertically with one inch medical tape that you can get at the drugstore. The reason why it's important to keep your jaws closed is that even if you open your mouth a little bit, your tongue moves back, obstructing your breathing, and this causes your stomach juices to come up into your throat. I'll place a link below on the video I did on mouth taping. These last two tips, numbers seven and eight, are meant to minimize acid reflux by keeping the nose open and the jaws closed. And number nine, do everything in your power to accommodate eating your dinner much earlier. Some people have been successful in taking lunch and dinner to work or eating out while at work or at school before coming home. Eating out is not as healthy, but sometimes you have to make compromises. The most ideal situation is to look for another job or arrange your schedule so that you can come home early enough to have a healthy dinner. One trend I'm noticing with our older children's activities is that more and more often, they're being scheduled right in the middle of our family dinner time. With very few exceptions, we choose not to participate in those activities since we value family dinner time above everything else. One last comment about melatonin. It's been shown that it goes down with age, which probably explains why people have more sleep problems as they get older. Eating at midnight might not affect college students too much, but for 60 to 70 year olds, you know you have to eat dinner much earlier. It's been suggested that one possible reason for lowered melatonin production from the pineal gland is accumulation of fluoride over time with calcification. Regardless of how young or old you are, it's probably a good idea to drink non-fluidated water. Hopefully you found all these tips helpful. If you take action on some or all of these steps, I'm confident that you will sleep better even if you eat close to bedtime. If you found this video helpful, please support my channel by subscribing below, as well as to sign up for my updates on new videos or future webinars and how you can breathe better and sleep better by clicking up here.